Wimbledon, of course, with Neil Sullivan in goal. A tower of strength here, but for how much longer? It's a back four. Kenny Cunningham at right back, another highly rated Premiership performer. Trond Andersen, who played for Norway last week against his central defensive partner today, Iceland's Hermann Freidersen. And Alan Kimball, a fine crosser of the ball from left back. In midfield, a tight central three. Walid Badir, the Israeli international. Robbie Earle, now in his ninth season with Wimbledon. And Jason Ewell, his 23rd birthday today. With Carl Court working down the right-hand side in Egil Olsen's system. And Marcus Gale balancing off on the left. There's one main attacker, and John Hartson, of course, still out. So Wimbledon call again on Carl Lieber. For Everton, Thomas Muir plays in the Premiership for the first time this season. A back four, all centre-halves by trade. Richard Dunn operating at right back. And in the middle, it's David Weir alongside that hardy annual Richard Goff. David Unsworth reverts to left back after playing in midfield against Preston in the Cup. In midfield, Nick Barmby is suspended, so Danny Kadamatri starts a Premiership game for the first time for a year. Don Hutchison missed training last week with a touch of tonsillitis. Mark Pembridge is moved infield today, and Michael Ball pushed forward from left back. Walter Smith kept Evertonians guessing, but American Joe Max Moore does start. Francis Jeffers withdrawn from the firing line today. Kevin Campbell is here, though, and he tore Wimbledon apart in August. And kept the side that uh, beat Newcastle, and they've kept the same substitutes as well. They're still missing several senior players, including Ben Thatcher, who is both injured and suspended. Everton's back up on the bench while John Collins on his way back after a shin injury, not regarded as being totally match sharp. Well, it may not be the West End. But Bill Kenwright hoping for a successful show from Everton today. There's no doubt that the move behind the scenes have stabilised things for the Evertonians. Two points between the two sides in Everton's favour. was 4-0 to Everton against Wimbledon in August. That match came at a time when Wimbledon were still failing in their comprehension of the new methods. Egil had only just landed at the club. Well, different preparations for the two teams today. FA Cup exertions for Everton last weekend, but also the excitement of progressing to the quarterfinals. And another home draw as well against Aston Villa. But Everton, well, they won here last season. And as I say, they gave the Dons a real drubbing at Goodison in August. We shall see. And they're taking on one of the FA Cup quarter-finalists who have found wins harder to come by in the Premiership. Just two in the last 14 league games for Walter Smith's side. It's a blustery afternoon. In truth, the weather has worsened considerably in the last couple of hours. Problem with Danny Kadamatri has an opportunity to impress today coming from the right of midfield in goes Joe Max Moore still battling for it Kevin Campbell's in there comes to Pembridge and a fine block by the Wimbledon skipper Rose. Pembridge with the corner oh is that it we look across at the assistant on the far side who kept his flag down and Neil Sullivan breathes again Kerry Richards didn't see anything to flag for, the ball didn't cross the line in his mind, Andy. Yeah, he's right on the flag, you see him, he steps away just for about a yard, but as it drops, well, his body's over it from the angle we're at there. But you can see Joe Max Moore's not 100% confident, Mark, and he turns round, he's anxious. Oh, goodness, it's a close call. Benefit the doubt to the goalkeeper, I think he got it right. Cunningham. Dale waiting on the edge of the area, hoping that uh, Ewell would tee it up for him after a good flick from Carl Lieber. Uh, you mentioned the blustery conditions, I think. And now Ewell, fighting Cunningham to come forward. Caught. Good challenge on him by Unsworth. And Campbell uh, trying to dart in beyond Trond Anderson. Michael Ball got it forward well into space behind the Wimbledon. Central defenders, ball going in again, he's returning to the Premiership starting role after a long absence today. This time since November, 
I know he did in the Preston match in the FA Cup last weekend. York. Defended David Weir. And it was a, a ball that was uh, driven deep by Kimball, just too high for Bryderson. A little unusual. Normally Kimball puts it right on the money. Four. Adventurous uh, selection in midfield, you feel, by Walter Smith. Kadamati, of course, perhaps better known as a striker, although the feeling at Goodison Park is that he could carve out a career for him in this wide uh, midfield role. Michael Ball will like to get forward down the left-hand side. Good width. Go. Which have done biting in. Cunning. We've been calling for a deep cross. Comes off the... Uh, Arm of ball, I've seen as handball. Good hold up play by Campbell again. Shot in outlet so far, Danny Kadamathrick for Everton. And it comes in field, well, it's harder to predict maybe. And he's eager to impress. And a spell in London on the line with Fulham. Hutchison. It's reach by Trond Anderson. Ball. They're stopping uh, the supply through the centre from Pembridge. Campbell. More. That's decent. Little leg going, don't they? Wimbledon Mark. They never get disappointed if nothing's dropping for them. You know, a lot of teams might get a little bit disappointed, frustrated. It never happens at Wimbledon. They just play percentages, they keep knocking on the door, just hoping that that one time it will drop for one of them. Patches it. A little bit of revenge, maybe in the challenge from the deer, but Everton going on. Moore's header. Neither at goal or glancing into the park. Gale will reach this. And towards uh, Lieburn. Jimbo's corner. Goff got a foot to it. Yule trying to play it into the crowd and get it back. It's a, a situation where you might have expected him to shoot. Gale. Earl trying to get there. Pembridge beat him to it. Kadamatrick to try and counter attack here. Again, more. Available for Everton. It's a bit of a heavy touch by Dunn. And now Buell to get a foot in. Great header by Harrison. Well, it's the sort of contest that we expected. Certainly a physical side to it. Nothing to really uh, upset the referee. Court defending. Lever waiting for some support. Gets it from Cunningham. Everton are regrouping. Wimbledon really didn't shift the ball uh, quickly enough from Lever. Here's Moore. Frank's gone up against Kevin Campbell. No goal. Oh, just drifted into early. A short touch to Unsworth. Ball ahead of him, working uh, Cunningham back, so there's more space for Unsworth to go in, too. And cross here towards Campbell. It's tempted Sullivan off his line. He's got a free kick, I think, but uh, it's a decent ball. Yeah, yeah, he didn't argue with the offside, but you can see how disappointed he is with this decision. He feels it's a pretty... Genuine challenge, I think he's right, I think he goes up for the ball, there's not a lot, a lot of contact there. Here's Carl Court. Been a shortage of shots so far. Go. 
Good work by Marcus Gale. He's passed Weir as well. Reflected out by Ball, and it's gone to a player in yellow. But Hutchison was a bit tentative, unusual for him. Even the second time, he kept it short, and Everton have lost it again. And Cunningham, who's never scored for Wimbledon, hops for the cross. It'll reach Gale. And that was uh, a wasted opportunity to keep... Uh, Everton in some fear of going one goal behind here at Selhurst Park. Ball. This is Armsworth steaming uh, forward initially in support of Ball. That's a good cross. Kadamatari! Came in unmarked and onside. And should score. Simple as that. This is a wonderful ball from left to right from David Armsworth. Measured, deliberate. And when you're seven yards out, you don't have to jump, but put your head on it and direct it. That's not a great header from Danny Cadamatri. He should have been making Sullivan's job, well, and an enviable one. He should have been picking the ball out the net, it's as simple as that. Beautifully measured. That's a great opportunity. He knows it. Smith uh, steered Everton to victory here at Wimbledon last season and Kadamatri scored in that game. Ball. Well, I think they're worth a goal lead, Martin, I have to say. Ball. Been occupied in other parts of the pitch. And Unsworth uh, prepared to go forward again. Campbell to use his strength here. Good block by Trond Anderson. Well, some tackles are daft tackles. That sort of eventuality. Coming in. Now caught. He is gifted with the ball at his feet. It's worth turning quickly, but not clearing far enough for Everton. Coming in his cross. Maybe leave. He did have to deal with it. Right just across the yeah. line. <laughs> Hutchison, Campbell, Anderson's complaining, but uh, that's the hurly-burly of the Premiership, I think. Campbell, why? We're in the thick of that, flag has gone up. I feel that physically Kevin Campbell's getting the edge over the Norwegian. Gale. Caught. Oh, well, you'd expect to find him again. Muras rather patted it away. Cunningham to put it back towards Robbie Earl. It didn't quite drop for Lieburn. Uh, golf just... Earl. Been very eager at times, Everton. Kadamatri. Moore. Pembridge. Still Pembridge, and they wanted to pass, it never really looked uh, as though he was shaping for a shot. That was a chance, it was a lovely break, and he had men forward, committed in numbers, Everton did. Four right along the edge of the 18-yard box for Pembridge. Kadamatri. Oh, referee, referee. Wait, wait, wait. Certainly didn't do Everton any favours, the whistle. Blow to Everton in more ways than one. Hutchison. Now done. Hutchison reading the direction of Anderson's header. Ryderson. Maybe another indication of the steel that he's brought to Wimbledon's back line. You give and go with uh, Robbie Earl. Campbell oh, showing uh, the lingering effects of that uh, bang in the tackle with Dunn earlier on. Kadamatri moves away at pace again. It's not an easy pitch on which to dribble the ball for too long. Goff. Now Unsworth. Yeah, 
is, as we pointed out earlier, a game which will have a very uh, much appreciated reward for a winner today. And the tightness at the bottom of the table. It's a, a bad game to lose. Hutchison. Campbell. Mag has gone up again. And they do hold a good before half time. Cambridge. Hands work on the move again. One last Everton attack before the interval. Goff. Cambridge. Hutchison. Even trying to deny him uh, looked more space than Wimbledon would have wanted him to have. Unsworth. It's over more, it won't reach Campbell. Pembridge. Maybe uh, appreciating that but we have reached the interval at Selhurst Park. With uh, Neil Sullivan having a, an early scare, but it is Wimbledon nil, Everton nil. Regan Olsen will tell you that Wimbledon will be stronger in a month or so's time. Everton with the more to be pleased about, one would have thought, in the foot of Pembridge. And Everton conspicuous in the number of players they've got forward. Now that little thing, that little sort of Buell Earl and Badia. Headed away by Marcus Gale. Unsworth, certainly on a hot streak when it comes to goal scoring. You, real width, a little give and go with Lieber. Here's Court. Well, it was always, as you could see from this angle, kind of pass wide of the near post. Yeah, both from Wimbledon as an attacking force that we saw in the whole of the first half. But for Richard Goff, they might well have taken an early lead in this match. Would have been second base for most of it. It's a little bit too high, too deep. It never looked like going out, but. What a great piece of defending this is. Look at Goff, he suddenly sees there might be a problem, and he gets himself in between court and the ball. And a wonderful servant he has been. Vidison. Pembridge trying to take it out at pace, but he ran into Jason Ewell. Lee Byrne. Court. To place the ball into a decent area, then didn't come off for Wimbledon. Now come Everton with Hutchison and Kadamatri. Kendall has the back pedal again. Sullivan beaten to it by Kevin Campbell. Everton have some reward for the purpose in their play here at Selhurst Park. I think the weather plays a part, Mark, I don't think this is a great ball in. He kind of scuffs it, and you watch it hold up in the wind. The, the goalkeeper thinks it's coming all the way through, he suddenly realises it's dying in front of him. And Campbell just needs the merest of touches on this. And that's all he gets, it just helps the ball on. The goalkeeper's committed himself. You watch it drop, look at the ball drop in front of the goalkeeper. Touch is all it's needed. Everton have a very deserved lead. And Phil Kenwright, the true blue, now at the top of the club. Joining in the applause for the opening goal at Selhurst Park. might uh, think about changing this Andy against Sunderland he played Marcus Gale through the middle that might be a, a switch that could happen on goes Kadamatri well, we do think he has to change it I think Lee Burns, he's tried and tried and what but he has been relatively ineffective Hutchison Kadamatri Dunn's gone ahead of him this time Run into Kadamatri's space. 
after his cross. More coming in with great determination. Adam Archery is certainly in the mood. And Kimball left cursing and chasing again. Moore and Campbell in the centre. Hutchison. Dunn. Headed out by Kenny Cunningham. Nicely guided down by Lieber. Taken on by Gale. He can switch it to the right if he had the sort of picture of the pitch that we had from up here. It was much easier to spot that Kenny Cunningham was in space. Is it? Grass level. Anderson. Continue to pass it in a confident manner. Everton on a difficult surface against the type of opposition that tries to get in and around. Gale again. Cambridge has done well and Campbell can uh, keep Everton with forward momentum here with help from Joe Max Moore. Kadamatri. Cross towards Campbell. 2 0. Same combination. And Wimbledon have no answer to Danny Kadamatri on the right and Kevin Campbell in the air. Simplicity itself. Kimball is so unsure, Martin, that you look how far away he is. Look at him. Look how far he stands off Kadamatri. You can't allow people a chance to cross like that. You've got to close tighter to him, but he's had such a torrid time. Oh, what a lovely ball out, but look at that. Plum in the middle of goal. Totally unmarked. And you're playing with this confidence, and you've already scored. Well, the header in the end is a very good one from Kevin Campbell. Keepers, no chance. The campbell kadamatri combination striking twice in eight minutes. And it's very much going Everton's way here in South London. And Goffer having it run, moving into midfield. <laughs> Get back, so I can be shown. Ryderson. I have to see him out, as you said, was talking. Jason Ewell. And we will need him and others to influence the proceedings here. Hutchison, Campbell, Moore's unmarked, here's Joe Max. Wimbledon are being ripped apart here as they were at Goodison Park when Kevin Campbell played such a big part. Joe Max Moore, a recent recruit, but it's his third goal already. What a ball from the skipper. What a ball that is from Hutchison. He had vision, awareness, perfectly weighted ball from Hutchison. Perfectly weighted ball from Campbell. The rest is simple for Joe Max Moore. Wonderful goal. And you're right, Mark. Wimbledon are being ripped apart. Well, the signs were there in the first half. Maybe not that we'd get to a three-goal margin, but that Everton were the better team in a goalless first half, and they have really shown that now on the scoreline. Two scored by Campbell, a big part for him in the third. Eggie Olsen came to the club, but he's dug in there, done his work, and they're short of numbers, really. So he's had some senior appearances recently, scored a goal in the Premiership against... West Ham over the uh, holiday period. It is a big uh, hole for Wimbledon to try and dig themselves out of here. And it's Olays from the travelling band of Evertonians. No, it's not a time for sure, but Mark, no, it's a time for winning the match. Give themselves a wonderful position to do it from. Ball. Answer.
Well, some teams reaching the FA Cup quarter-final might start to get a little bit distracted, even though that's a couple of weeks away. Everton in no position in the league table to let their minds wander. And they have been truly focused here. Now come Everton again. In fact, the percentages are on. One would think Everton scoring more. Campbell. They've got a bit between their teeth. More. Done! Lovely play again. Caught. Work from Ardley. Oh, he was trying to get a bit of whip on that and Pembridge. Campbell. And Cadamartry. Confidence oozing from every pore for Everton. Unswell. Campbell. Here's Ardley. Now caught. John Anderson's made a run into the penalty area as well. That's a throw. Hardly. He's going to run away from court. Still needed claiming by Mura. Yeah, the bend on the ball was always oh, trying to let it run. I don't know where it's gone for Wimbledon today. Hutchison, one of four forwards for Everton here. Using Campbell as the decoy in the end. Pembridge. <laughs> well, it is time maybe for one or two little party tricks. Well, you could do that in the final throw. There's nothing wrong with trying little tricks like that in the final throw to get a ball in the, behind the back four. He wasn't very far away from that upset my, my friends at that level of the game. You know what I'm saying. Hutchison. Kadamatri. Off to Sari to join in further forward again. Hutchison. What's it done? Pushing Kimball back. Campbell! Oh, you just think that. It's there for him, isn't it? The way he's played. In uh, many ways, it's a, a bigger difference. In 31 than the three points suggest. 31 would have been quite comfortable. One of them would have felt if they'd have won this game. And here they are looking at Kevin Campbell's offside. Well, that's a couple of times he's got it in when it hasn't counted to go with the two that have counted. Again, just went a little early for me. I think he's looking along the line now. It's just this near side. Is Kimball playing him on? I think it's touch and go. Certainly went in behind the two centre backs, but goodness me, that is another one that could easily have been allowed. Well Marty coming back to life again. Hutchison. Satisfying for Walter Smith. Change that he had to make. That's a loss of Barnby. Plumping for Kadamatri. That's worked out well. He didn't have to leave out Francis Jeffers to rest him, but he's done that. And pairing of Joe Maxmore with Campbell. They've really been sharp as tacks, the two of them. It's misjudged by Dunn. Andreessen. Caught! Corner. Great, Anderson. One very important one we don't want you to miss. Hey, they also know what happened to Sheffield Wednesday yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unsworth. Moore. Back to David Unsworth. Come on! Oh, for Tron Anderson. Gale. Cunningham's cross. Off target by Martin Andresen. There you go. Now we are. You read your mind, the manager. Don Hutchison not booked today. 
goes off, not to the dressing room, maybe he wants to act as cheerleader for the time that remains, which is, as you can see, six minutes or so. Bill Kenwright with that broad grin, summing up Everton's mood, Abel Xavier comes into the midfield, and for Sky Digital viewers, the player cam now switches in that midfield to Mark Pembridge. recently through a virus. Katamatri. Change of pace, lost Ewell. He's beaten Kimball. But he can't get past Horidas. <laughs> Not for the want of trying. I think that's a free kick. I know defenders get away with it time and time again. And you know what they're doing, they're letting the ball run out, but we never look at this again. I just think as it's going out, that's the first one. And watch again. It's got to be a free kick. <laughs> I mean, it protects it there, but just... Oh. Good days against Wimbledon. They were the first team to send Wimbledon to a home defeat when they came into the top division Back in the mid-80s. From a couple of pals of yours, Andy Graham Sharp and Kevin Sheedy. Yeah. I know them well. Also, when Wimbledon won the cup, holders, they defended it the following season. Who did they get knocked out by? Everton in the quarterfinals. It's been a pretty good season so far for playing them 4 4 0 at Goodison. 3 mm. 0 up here. So we play you every week, that's what the fans <laughs> usually chant. Haven't heard that today. Again, Walter Smith getting a triumphant disaster with the same firm expression, not getting carried away. Have you ever seen him in extremes of anger? Yes, yes. I'm quite happy at times. Found a fiver once on the street, he was absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> Only a Scott could say that about a Scott. <laughs> Grayson. And Ardley. And Ewell looking for a birthday goal. Gale. A well, good defending, or even at 3 0 up. A couple of minutes left, there were still plenty of yellow shots. Prepared to get in the way of Jason Ewell as he was striking that. Ardley's cross. Trying to get to it, the wind gusting the ball away from the Wimbledon man. And Graham Barber pointing in Everton's favour. Everton determined to deny Wimbledon right to the last. Yule letting fly. And the ball didn't travel very far, did it? In. Oh, good touch that was by David Weir. Well, that's the hardest kind of ball for a defender to deal with. He must be no more than four yards from his own goal. It's between him and his goalkeeper. Lovely defending. Nicely done. Kimball's cross. On from Xavier. And Rich into the feet of Abel Xavier. There will be two extra minutes, and Wimbledon will just want to get this over with and uh, get it out of their systems. But at times, 
Everton have turned this into an exhibition. Wimbledon came into the game hoping that they'd learned from their experience at Goodison Park, a painful experience then, but it's been just as painful today. The only difference really is the scoreline's not quite so emphatic, but very nearly so. Could easily have been though, couldn't it? Yeah. and Goff, back line have done well in the uh, formative stages of the game. Worked hard in midfield and when the chances came in the second half, the front men have uh, taken them in some style. Yeah, we haven't really seen a contest today in any sense of the word, Martin, but what we have seen is a pretty impressive performance from Everton away from home. All the wonder that we're a record away from home is so poor when you... Watch what they've produced today. That seven day break in Grand Canaria hasn't worked wonders for Wimbledon. No doubt that will get a mention in the dressing room in the next couple of days. Especially from those who've had to pay the bills. <laughs> Xavier, Kadamatri, in front of the Everton fans again beneath us. Everton complete the double over the Dons for the first time in the Premiership, emphatically. Kevin Campbell, who did so well at Goodison Park in the reverse fixture in August, has scored two goals in quick succession here and set up the third for Joe Max Moore. And real worries for Wimbledon. Yesterday's results did not help them. Chelsea away, Manchester United here, their next two games. But great credit to Everton, they concentrated on the present and not the excitement of the future of their involvement in the last eight of the FA Cup in a couple of weeks' time. They had a real sense of purpose today, played well in the first half and took Wimbledon apart in the second. Final score, Wimbledon nil, Everton three. You two guys certainly played very well. Kevin, what was the importance of that win for you? It was very important, I think, uh, with the results yesterday. You know, uh, we're starting to look over our shoulder a bit. Um, teams were starting to catch us up, uh, winning underneath us. So it's very important we picked up three points there and, you know, uh, get playing well. Danny, a long time since you've started a Premiership game for Everton. How determined were you to do well? Uh, as determined as I could be, you know, it's uh, an important time for me. Uh, a couple of suspensions and injuries, you know, have given me the chance to get in there and and uh, try and give the manager a bit of a uh, team selection problem uh, and all I can do is try and get in there and do the best I can and, and push everybody else. Do you want to stay in do well? There was a time when it, you could have been away. No, there's never been a time that I've wanted to, to get away at all. You know, I've, um, people were saying when I went to Fulham that it was it was a possibility of a, a move and to rebuild my career but it was really just to get me some match fitness really and, and try and get some sharpness under my belt to come back and hopefully push for a place. Kevin, is there a chance of an England call, do you think? Uh, 12 Premiership goals now? I don't know, I'm not really... <laughs> that um, worried about England at the moment. There's a lot of sh good strikers there and I'm, I'm way down the picking order at the moment. So as long as I keep playing well for um, Everton, you never know, but I'm not um, counting my chickens. Danny, the league position looks healthy now, but is the FA Cup the big target now? I think both are just as equally as important, you know, uh, two uh, entrances to Europe. Uh, I think, you know, with a good win like that against, you know, the teams that are going to push you hard, We've got to aim to get up the table and hopefully push for a place in the, in the in the European spots. Uh, but the Cup's a, a good chance for us as well, you know, and if we can go for both, then we can go for both. We'll just have to see what happens. Do you enjoy picking Kevin out for the crosses? Yeah, it's great to play with, you know, the likes of Kevin. You know, he's always uh, on hand to, to score a few goals and, you know, you're going to get a couple, couple of goals from him. And uh, it's just important for, for the team, really, to, to get around him and to help him out. Well, Kevin's just pipped you for the calling man the match. If you can give that to him, we're well played, both of you. Congratulations. Got to give it to Danny, I think. I think he deserves it. He played oh. really well. <laughs> Here you go, very, Dan. Very generous of <laughs> yeah. you. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. What was the most satisfying thing about winning three points today for you? Well, I think it was important for us. We've had a lot of draws and um, a lot of our matches, and we had to get back to trying to uh, get a win. And we knew it would be a difficult match the way Wimbledon play, and I felt uh, pleased with the way we handled the game. We handled it very well in the early parts. Restricted Wimbledon to a few opportunities during the match, and uh, I felt played very well over the piece. 
Not many teams do the double over Wimbledon and score so many goals against them over the season. Have you found the secret? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think we can say that. Uh, you have to work very hard. I felt our defenders played very well against the longer ball. We managed to pick up most of the ball that was knocked down. And uh, in the first half, maybe, um, we're a bit unfortunate maybe not to have one goal at least. Second half, once we got it, we settled down and played a bit. And, uh, we were pleased with the result there. With results yesterday, um, did you feel you had to win today? I feel that we have to win every time we go and play. I mean, I, I think that's uh, that's the thing. There's a group of teams around the middle of the league that uh, if you get a win, it can take you up. If you if you lose, then um, you drop right down. So uh, you know, it's important for all the teams in that area to try and keep winning. And obviously, we're pleased to do so at a very difficult ground. 33. Um, have you got a target now that you want to reach for safety? I don't think any team can can pick that out. I think they've just got to concentrate and, and try and win. Uh, if we hadn't won today, you know, the gap between ourselves and the teams just at the bottom of the league or just around the fringe of the relegation was only a couple of matches. So we had to make sure that we tried to keep a big gap and we managed to do that. Can you feel safe in the league now and then go full tilt for the FA Cup? I don't think anybody can say that you feel safe. I think, uh, as I said, when you're in the group of teams um, that we're in at the present moment, uh, it's always difficult to achieve a result. And, um, you've always got to work very hard and, and do well to get one. So you can go long runs where you don't get a victory. You know, we've had a couple of wins, uh, you know, quite a few games, but mainly draws. So it was good to get back on a winning trail tonight. Bill Kenroy told us before the game there wasn't much in the way of uh, money in the coffers. So how important is a cup run for you? Well, the cup run, I think, is important for the club overall. I think they can gain a great deal of confidence from, uh, from the cup. Uh, but uh, Aston Villa are coming on to a good run just now. But for us, that's a couple of weeks away. We have a, a really important game against Derby next week at, at Goodison. So, you know, we hope we can add to today's result, which, you know, if you do manage to win one or two games in a row, then it makes a difference. But uh, as I say, all the teams that are there are all capable of beating the other, so you have to turn in good performances each time you play. No question marks over Kevin Campbell, but maybe there has been over Danny Cadamartri. Uh, has he come and grabbed his chance today, Walter? Well, uh, Danny, we have a number of young players that are having to learn or trade playing in the Premier Division. You know, Richard Dunn, Michael Ball, Franny Jeffers and young Danny. And uh, they'll all have their ups and downs over the period till they, they gain the, the necessary experience. And uh, Danny's a little bit like that, isn't a little bit hot and cold. I mean, even in the game today, uh, always liable to do something, but always liable to be a little bit erratic. But uh, he gives you everything that he's got in every game that he plays. So I was pleased for him today that, that he managed to contribute to the goals. I think he deserved that for the work he put in. And you felt it was time to give Francis Jeffers a rest, but uh, Joe Max Moore certainly took his chance, didn't he? Yeah, he did do. Joe's uh, a good player, and we're hoping that uh, you know he can take a lot better weight off Francis. I mean, it's, again, I say they are young players. He's only just turned 19 a few weeks ago, Francis, and you're, you're asking him to, to learn to play and keep a consistent level in a very difficult league, and it's hard that. And uh, you know, I just feel that taking him out of the team every now and again will bring the freshness back to him, and hopefully Joe can. Um, suppliers with uh, a good level, which he did today. Walter, thanks very much.